Today we're checking pointers at runtime again. We're gonna look at how you can check a pointer that you're about to access. You just have some address, you have a pointer you wanna check, or maybe it's not even a pointer, maybe you just wanna do something dangerous that might crash your program. Today I wanna to talk about one way that you could try it out without crashing your program. So let's take a look. Welcome back everybody. A while back I made a video about checking pointers at runtime. Basically a technique using a dummy pipe and the right system call and some of the error checking that it does in order to take a look at a pointer and tell us whether that pointer is mapped or unmapped, whether it's going to seg fault or not. I'll put a link down in the description if you missed it, check it out. But I was recently exploring this same topic with one of my classes and uh, we worked through an example that does this in a slightly different way. So today I wanted to revisit that challenge and take a look at it because it's interesting, it's cool, and it might even be useful in a future program, who knows. At the very least, I think it sheds some light on how fork works and also just process isolation and, and you know how computers work. As in the previous video, I wanna be really clear up front that this is not something that I necessarily recommend doing in production code. The best way to avoid bad pointers is to just not write buggy code. So that's really the advice. So yeah, testing, well-designed software, that's definitely where you want to start. I would look at what we're doing today more as an exploration exercise that in some rare cases, in some corner cases, might actually turn out to be useful in production code. But as a general practice, I don't recommend checking pointers at runtime, except for, of course, checking null occasionally. That does make sense. But it's better to avoid bad pointers than to check them at runtime, because this is also going to be kind of slow. So to do this all the time is going to slow your program down. Before we jump into the code, just a quick mention, if you're enjoying these videos, if you get value out of this channel, I do hope you'll support the channel on Patreon. That really makes it possible for me to do what I'm doing on this channel, and I really appreciate the support. So thank you in advance. Now let's jump into the code. Okay, so this is the example from last time. Basically, we had a bunch of pointers. We had uh, one that was null, one that was not null, but it was definitely junk. And then we had a couple of pointers that we were actually, uh, that we could write to, that were valid. And then I had made this function called testptr, which would take a pointer and the number of bytes. And then it had some message, something, a label, basically that it was gonna print out when we got the result just so you could see what it was gonna do. Okay, so I wanna do the same thing, but we're just gonna do it in a slightly different way. Just a quick refresher. So this is what we were doing before using uh, using the pipe system call and write. Uh, definitely, like I said, check out the previous video if you want more details about how that works. But let's just come in here. I wanna make a new one, test PTR2. And let's just start by copying all this over. We'll just duplicate our code here. But then up here in this is mapped function, I'm just going to blow this all away. Okay, so we now have this function here and uh, yeah, let me just come down, we'll pull this out of the way. Okay, so we've got our pointers and we're going to test them. And then here in this test PTR, we're just going to print out the label, the name of the thing that we're testing. We're going to print out the number of bytes and the pointer, and we're gonna use this is mapped function. So that's basically what we're working on right now. Now, in the last video, we took advantage of a system call that actually does memory checking and it has an error code that would return whether or not there was an invalid address passed in. But today we're gonna do it in a slightly, maybe more general way. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use fork. Now I've talked about fork in a previous video. I'll also link down in the description of that. If you've never seen fork, you might wanna check out that video. It's basically the system call or the function that makes new processes in Linux or Unix or pretty much any Unix-based OS. So basically, if we start here, we'll just do, like we do something like this. We're gonna declare a variable of type PIDT, that's a process ID type. And then let's just come down here and we'll say child equals fork. So what this is going to do, if you checked out the other video, is this is going to split the current process into two processes, right? Now, the problem with checking pointers often is that the only way we find out if a pointer is a bad pointer is if we try to read to it or write from it. And if we do, then it blows up on us. But we want to be able to try it out, but we don't want it to blow up our whole program. So what we're going to do is we're going to split our process into two processes. One's a parent, one's a child. Now, the child, so if this child variable is is equal to zero, we know we have the child. So that tells us where the child process, and in this case, the child process is going to be a disposable one. I'm basically just using it as a sandbox to try something out that's dangerous. And that specific thing is I either want to read from or write to this pointer right here, and this is how many bytes, okay? Now I'm gonna update this just a little bit and say, let's make another argument and I'm gonna call it right. So if this is true, and let's come in here, I'm gonna need to include 
standard bool.h. Okay, so if this right here is true, what that means is I want to write to the memory, and if it's false, then I want to read from the memory. Okay, now why do we distinguish isn't a bad pointer a bad pointer? Well, not quite, because you can, when you map a block of memory, you can map that memory as read only or write only. You can give it different privileges, and maybe we could talk about that in a future video. Let me know if you would like to see more about that in a future video. We can we can talk about it, but the point is sometimes you'll segment fault if you read or write, but not the other, not vice versa. So now what I'm going to do is here in the child process, what I'm going to do is say, let's just make a uh, void pointer called data and we will malloc some space. I'm going to malloc the number of bytes that I want to read from or write to. Okay, so now I've allocated that. Now basically I'm going to say if we are writing, now, if we're going to write, then we're going to do mem copy with PTR as the destination. So we're going to write into this memory from this data. And it just I'm just writing from there. It's garbage. Who cares what it is? We just know that it's valid. So then we're going to write bytes into there. OK, so this is going to try to write into PTR from data and it's going to write a certain number of bytes. We could also have done this with something like mem set PTR zero bytes, something like that, right? So this, in fact, yeah, I kind of like this better, actually. So let's do that instead. And then we'll come down here. And so I'm actually going to just move this down because the only place we're going to need it is if we're going to read from it. And then here, if we're reading, then we are just going to do mem copy and we're going to read from PTR into this data block of memory, and then we're going to read the number of bytes that we want to read. So this is going to basically copy from the place that we're trying to access into this data array, this, this array of bytes. Okay, so basically this is the dangerous thing we're trying to do. If we're dealing with a bad pointer here, this is where we're going to get a seg fault or a bus error or something nasty. This is where we're going to crash, okay? If we don't crash, then I'm going to come down here and just exit zero. So the child process is going to come down and basically if it gets down this far safely, that means it was able to do the memory operation that we wanted to do and we were able to exit with success. So instead of zero, just to be explicit here, I'm going to say exit success, which happens to be zero. Okay, so that's all the child process is going to do. Oops. Now, if we come down here, now what do we want to do in the parent process? Now, the whole idea of creating that child process is to create a clone, a sandbox, where we don't really mind if that clone crashes. We just don't want the parent to crash. And so what I can do here is just we're going to look at the status of the child. OK, so I'm going to make a variable called status and then we will call we'll make another PID underscore T. I'm going to call it result. And then we're going to call wait PID with the child process ID. So child, remember I, I said child is going to be zero if it's the child, but if it's the parent, it's going to be the process ID of the child. So we can use it right here. Then we'll come down here and we'll pass in the address of status. So that's going to be filled with whatever the child status is once the child is done running. And then we'll pass in a zero here. Okay. So this is going to then wait until the child is done running. And then we're going to get the status in here. Okay. Now I'm just going to add a quick, just little error check, just in case something went weird with wait PID. Uh, probably should never happen, but uh, we'll just say that result is greater than or equal to zero. So if result was ever negative, that means there's some error. And I'm not in this example going to add in error handling. I'm just going to use an assert here. But normally you would have this in some kind of if statement and then you would have some kind of error message that says, hey, something went bonkers and I don't know what it is. But then down here, what I'm going to do is return status equal to zero, okay, or equal to exit success. Okay, so what this is saying is if status is actually equal to exit success, this is going to evaluate to true. Otherwise, it's going to evaluate to false, okay? So this is going to basically create this child process, run it inside the child process, do the dangerous thing that I don't trust myself to do in the parent. And if it crashes, then we're going to get that back in the status down here. So this status variable will tell us whether it successfully made it to that exit statement. And if it didn't, we'll get some other status message. OK, so let's try it out. Let's make sure this works. Now, I have a make file here that was just uh, compiling my test PTR function. So let's add another one here, PTR2. And we'll compile. Oh, interesting. OK, one second. I was in my old example. I don't know why all of a sudden it's not compiling, but it's because we are missing standard int.h. And let's do the same thing in the other one. OK, so missing header files. Oh, yes. And I added an argument here, but I forgot to update it down here. So for now, let's just say that we are doing right. So 
true for each of these. We'll write into it, but we could of course try read and write. Oh, and then I have assert in here. So I'm going to have to add another include, which is assert.h. And let's remind ourselves which header file wait PID is defined in. Okay, there you go. So sys types we already have. So we just need up here, wait. Okay, and mem copy. Okay, so that's gonna be in string.h. And what am I missing here? Okay, so this warning down here is because I put this as a const and then I'm gonna write to it. So let's just for now, we can just make it not const. Okay, so now we have our example, let's run it. And it works. You can see we got zero for our two junk pointers and we got one for our valid pointers. And again, like I mentioned, it is a little slow. If we come in here and we rerun this with time, so, I mean, just to check four pointers took almost half a second. Now let's try it with the other one. I'm guessing, yeah, so it's about twice as fast. Oh, and it, I forgot. So it's twice as fast with this seg fault right here. So let's just take that out really quick for a second. So we're doing exactly the same stuff. Yeah, so this is actually a much faster way. So the earlier, so the one I'm showing you today is much slower. And so if you're just interested in speed and you actually wanted to check a pointer, maybe the former way the way that I did it in the previous video is the right way to go. But one interesting thing about using fork is it sets up a more general purpose sandbox. So this works for more than just bad pointers. Pretty much if there's anything in here that you think this might crash my program, you could try it out in a child process, then see if the child survives. And if it doesn't, well, then at least you know, and you could, it's, it's almost like having a try catch block in a language that doesn't support try catch blocks. So while it's not great on performance, it is an interesting thing that you might find useful at some point in some project. But I also hope it helps you see how Fork works and, and the fact that Fork does actually clone a process in a way that they're totally isolated from one another. So the child can do crazy dangerous stuff and its memory accesses aren't going to mess with the parent process at all. And so it can actually be kind of useful as a, as a you know canary in the coal mine sort of thing. Like you just try it out in a child first and see if it dies. And then if it does, well, then you know not to do it in the parent. And I hope that's interesting. I hope you learned something new today. And until next week, I'll see you later. Later.